Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 22. And I've entitled my message as the preserving power of God. The preserving power of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. The preserving power of God. Now, I want you to know that God has got a preserving power. Protective power. And he is God Almighty. And he is the one who preserves life. And I'm going to be reading from the book of, this book of Second Kings, about a man of God by the name Elisha. And when he went to Jericho, and he did a miracle there because things were not going well. Now, the Bible says, And the men of the city said to Elijah, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as the Lord sees, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. When you see the water is not, some, some, some versions say the water is polluted. Others say the water is, is bitter. Whatever it is, the water was not good. And the ground was barren. That means the ground was not producing fruits. Whatever was planted in that, in that land, there was no fruit coming by. If you came in contact with that water and you were an expectant mother, there was a miscarriage because the water was polluted by certain chemicals which we do not know. If you came in contact with that water, you became sick. So maybe that water was used only to wash the clothes and to do other general things, but when you drank it, something happened. It was so serious, such that anybody who wanted drinking water, they had to go outside the city to get water from somewhere else because the water was polluted. Now, because of these chemicals, the ground was not producing fruits. What do I mean by this? The plants would grow. And immediately they, they, they flower. When it came to the time of producing fruits, the fruits would wither and die. Because there was something wrong with the water. Nothing could come to maturity. That was the land of Jericho. And the Bible says they came to this prophet, Elisha. And they said to him, we know you are a servant of God. We know you've got the power of God. And we know who you are. But now, our, our case here is different. We are in a good city. We are in a good land, as you can see. The city is good. Knowing that, let me tell you something you don't know. Jericho is the oldest city in the world. It is the one which had systems even before Egypt, even before America, even before anywhere. Jericho is the oldest. Now, the systems were running. Things were very good. It was well built. It was fortified. But the issue was, the water had issues. The problem, the water had some problems. So, when they said to him, as you can see, the city looks good. The city looks wonderful. You can see the trees, you can see the flowers, you can see the systems of the city, you can see everything around us. But we have got a problem. The water of this city is having a problem. And there was one well that was producing water and it was causing it to go through the city and that's the water that people are using. Now, in our case today, we may be in a place like this. Wherever you are in the world, you know what is happening in the world today. We can stand up and say, we are in the United States. We are in Australia. We are in Africa. Big cities of Africa. Wherever you may be. But there is something that is happening in the air. Something is negative. We are walking in the, in the malls of the world today and they are empty. The marketplaces are empty. The buildings where people meet are empty. Cinemas and theaters going around. They are calling it COVID-19. And let me tell you, this was the case in Jericho. Everything was nice, was beautiful, was good. But the water was not good. Now I'm standing in front of you today here. Many of you may think that I'm, I'm speaking to thousands of people in the church. I can tell you that in England... So... I'm speaking to the key leaders of the church, key people who are doing the media, who are doing the, 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 the TV and production. These are the people I'm speaking with right now. An empty church. It's not because that we want to be in an empty church. No, because of the shutdown. Because of this enemy that has attacked the nations of the world. And you know what? We are living in wonderful places. But what is happening around, the air is polluted. In Jericho, the water was polluted. Let me say something here. When they said to the man of God that the water is, is, is bad, you know what Elisha did? Elisha said to them, the Bible says, and he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt there. And they brought it to him. 
And he went forth into the springs of water, spring of water, and cast in salt there, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be any form of death or barrenness anymore. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the day of Elisha, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spoke. Now, the Bible tells us that what Elisha did was he took salt. And he went to the source. That is where I want us to understand. And he went, he went to the source of the spring. And he put the salt there. And he commanded and said, Thus says the Lord, that from this day, the land will not be barren again, and the water will not be bitter anymore. Now, why did Elisha take salt? He took salt because salt was symbolic. And it is still symbolic and today. Now, because of technology, people do not use salt a lot for preservative, uh, as, a, uh, as a preservative method, or uh, as a preservative agent. But they use different kinds of things like refrigerator, they use different things like freezer to preserve things. But in the olden days, salt was important. Fishermen used to have so much salt in their boats because they knew that when they had a catch, they had to preserve it in salt. If you read the book of Leviticus, you will see that there are so many offerings, great offerings, and so many things that are happening there, that God told Moses that they must, they, they, they must put salt in it. I will not go into it now. It is called the covenant of salt. But when he took that salt, because it had uh, um, preventive or preservative powers in it, he spoke a word and said, from this day on, the water will not be bitter. And from this day on, the land will not be barren. And we understand the last verse 22. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spoke. That the water were healed. The waters were healed. According to the saying of Elisha, which he spoke. Now, I want us to look at three things about salt. Salt is known for it is preservative powers. It's preservative powers. Also, it was known for its healing powers. When we were growing up, we were told in school that if you had a wound, you wash it with salt, with salt. Because it has got some kind of healing powers. It kills germs and bacteria. Also during this time when there is this disease going around, I've read so many articles and I know that you have read them, that, when, uh, that those germs are staying in the neck for some time. That if you drink some salt water, salt water and you go hot water with, the, with, with salt, that with time it will die now. Even those people who have tonsils, you know, that's what you do. Because salt is believed to have some healing powers. And also, salt adds taste. Salt adds taste. It adds taste. That's why many people cannot eat any food without salt. You know, when you taste salt on its own, it has got that kind of bitter taste, salty taste, you know it. And a lot of it is not very good. But when you put it on the, uh, in the food, it changes the whole flavor of food. Now let me say this, yeah? The Bible says today that we are the salt of the world. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says that you are the salt of the earth. You and me, we are the salt of the earth. Why did Jesus say that? He did not, he did not compare us with so many things. I know one verse where he said we are the light of the world. Then here he comes and says that we are the salt of the world. That means if we are the salt of the world, we are agents of preservation. We are agents of healing. We are agents of adding taste to the world. We change taste wherever we go. If we are the salt of the earth, what happens to us is that we bring healing wherever we go. If we are the salt of the world, we preserve things. We cause uh, uh, preservation wherever we go. Jesus said, we are the salt, of, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost flavor, wherein shall it be salted? It is therefore not good for nothing, but must be cast out and be trodden underfoot by men. That means people can lose flavor. You are the salt of the world, I am the salt of the world, but if we don't take care of ourselves, we can, we can lose flavor in an environment where our flavor is needed so much. We can lose that taste of saltness. And we are needed in the world in a, world, in a time like this. Well, there are so many uncertainties in the world. Over the last few years, we've been hearing so many things, so many, so many things. Confusion in the land, earthquakes, problems, even with all manner of, uh, of economies. 
we have seen that even the biggest economies of the world can be tested. There's no one who is immune to this. But what is needed now is the fact that we are the salt of the earth. Let me ask you a question. Are you the salt of the earth? And the Bible says, if you are the salt of the earth, you must stay as the salt of the earth. Because if the salt loses flavor, it becomes like an ordinary powder in the house. It becomes irrelevant in the world. I pray that me and you will not be irrelevant at a time like this. When we are so much needed in the world, me and you are needed at a time like this to be the flavor of the world. And when God says that you are, then you are. When God says you are the salt of the world, then you are the salt of the world. When God says that you are the salt of the, the light of the world, then you are the light of the world. When God says that you are like the living episodes, people will read through you. People will get to know stars through you. People will be up uplifted through you. Because you are, you are living episodes. Not written by ink, but written by the Spirit of God. Now, one thing we need to know is that we need to stay salty. Salty. In order for us to be relevant to the, to the world we are living in. In your place of work, in the marketplace, you need to be salty. So that people can taste that saltiness. So that you can preserve light. So that you can bring healing powers. So that you can add taste in the place of work. We are not called to bring confusion. We are not called to bring fear. We are not called to that wherever we go, there are chaos. No, we are called to be the salt of the world. To preserve light. To bring healing and to add taste wherever we go. Now... How do you stay salty in this world? How do you stay salty? Number one, in order for you to stay salty in the world, you have to guard your heart. Guard your heart. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. You must keep your heart. Guard your heart. Now what's happening around at this time? There are messages of fear going through media, going through uh, people, people are speaking fear wherever they are. Worry, everywhere you go, there is, there is this kind of a negative air environment all around. The Bible says, guard your heart. I was watching television another day because everyone is watching news. And they, they showed us coffins in Italy where people are transported by, where, where coffins are now packed up such that they cannot fit any, anymore. Now they are being stored in a church, in churches, before, before the, the, the funeral takes place. When you keep on watching these kind of things non-stop and, 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 and staying with negative people and allowing thoughts of fear, thoughts of worry to flow in your life, listen to this, you find that your life is full of fear and not full of the word of God, not full of the spirit of God. So you have got a right to do what? To guard your heart, <clears throat> protect your heart. That's what it means. And it says, with all diligence, with all care, protect your heart. Remember, it is your responsibility to protect your heart. Why? Because out of your heart flows the issues of life. Do you know what the Bible says also? That out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, you got to understand that your words means a lot in the, in the life we are living in. But if you allow every, anything to come into your life, into, uh, into your heart, into your spirit, that you are, you are an open door to all manner of news, all manner of gossip, all manner of fear, all manner of everything, you will find that your heart is full, is packed with negative information. And what's going to happen to you? You find that because you are full of, of all these things, that what you are spitting out is what you have. Because you cannot speak what is not in, what, what was not in you. You cannot produce what is not in you. So, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Those people who are speaking fear every day, you know what's happening to them? It's because they have allowed so much fear in their spirits. Those people who are spreading worry every time, you know what's happening? It's because they are open doors and, and the doors of worry. That means they are always worried at night during the day. Those people who are discouraging each other, you know what's happening? Because they have opened their hearts to discouragement. But you know what? Me and you, we are not called for that. We are called to over encouragement. We are called to lift people's hearts. We are called to speak faith, not fear. The Bible says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. And I pray that you'll be an agent of power. You'll be an agent of sound mind. You'll be the one who is, who, who is speaking faith instead of fear. So, one of the things that will cause you to be salty in this kind of weather, in this kind of atmosphere, is guarding your heart. 
Because out of your heart, in the, the, the Bible says in the in, 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 in the, the, the NIV version that your heart is the wellspring of life. That means there is a stream that runs from your heart, a wellspring of life. And that wellspring of life is the one that changes people's lives whenever they go. They go. Remember, you are, you are a world changer. You are a world changer, and God expects you to change the world. So your, 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 your heart is the source. And we understand that Elisha went to the source of the stream, and he put salt there. So go to the source of your life, which is your heart, and put the right material there. Put the word of God there. Put praise there. Put encouragement there. Put all the things that are in the word of God. Like just like Elisha did. And you know what? From that day, the Bible says, out of that well, sweet waters started coming out. And when you put the right things into your spirit, into your heart, you will realize that something is going to take place in your life. That instead of producing negative things, you'll be producing positive things. And I pray that will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, let your life be saturated with the word of God. Let your life, your life, be saturated with the word of God. How do you saturate your life with the word of God? When you saturate your heart with the word. When you let the word of God flow into your life. During this time, during this season, speak the word of God in your life. Speak the word of God. Speak positive things. Somebody said to me, Pastor, I don't know what you are going to do. This thing is going to kill all of us. I said, no, it is not going to kill all of us. What the Bible says, that we shall live and not die to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I declare to you that it will not kill you. You shall live and not die. So instead of speaking fear, saturate your life with the word of God. Speak the word of God. Study the word of God. Digest the word of God. Say what God says concerning your life. The Bible says that he has got great plans for you. Speak those plans into your life. The Bible says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That means you are able to beat and defeat COVID-19 because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Bible says that all things are possible to them that believe. If the Bible says that all things are possible to those that believe, that shows me that they are possible to you and you can be able to overcome any kind of prayer, any kind of sickness. The Bible says that one will fall on your, uh, on your left hand and a thousand on your, on your right hand, but they shall never come near you. Speak those kind of things. Saturate your life with the word of God. Saturate your life. Don't speak, don't say the things that the news are saying. Don't speak the language that the world is speaking. Don't speak the language that those people who don't know God are speaking. We are the children of God. We have been made children of God. And we are seated in heavenly places with our God. So speak the right stuff in your life. And you see yourself moving from one level to another. That's how you stay salty. In order for you to become relevant on this earth, in order for you to become influential on this earth, you must remain salty. Because the Bible says you are the salt of the earth. And if the salt doesn't have any flavor, it becomes irrelevant. That means God expects you to be relevant. How do you do that? Number two, he said, by being saturated with the word of God. So get the word of God coming. Right now, at this time, when the, when the churches are not operating and many things are not happening, you know what? We will be preaching more than before. We will be online more than before. We will be sending messages to our church members and uh, people who are following us online more than before. Why? Because we want to keep everybody saturated by the word of God. Amen. We want to make sure that the word of God is flowing in every part of their life. We want to make sure that they are not, uh, they are, they are not affected by the economy of the earth because God is our source. And the source is the word of God. So we are going to make sure that things are happening in your life. Through the word of God. If you read on the word of God, listen to this, you come out smiling. Because the word of God is powerful. I know you are in your house, but let them that say amen on that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Number three. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What do I mean by conformed to this world? In your church you have been taught, have faith in God. In your church, you have, been, you have been taught that all things are possible with God. In the, in the Bible has, has taught you that you can overcome anything in life. But now, maybe you have decided to conform. And your language has changed to the language of the people of the world. Conform. Do not take shape. The word conform means taking shape. 
do not take shape of the things of the earth. The world is under the attack of the enemy. The world wants us to speak a certain language, a language of fear, a language of uncertainty. The world is not showing us people who are overcoming, but it's showing us people who are in hospitals and those who are dying. The world is not showing us that corner shop that is full of food because of visited some and they are packed with food, but it's showing us the supermarket which is empty. So what am I saying? Do not take shape of the world. The world wants to transmit fear. Do not take shape of the world. Speak what God says. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing, by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do you renew your mind? You renew your mind by the word of God. Take the old files away. Renewing is like restoring. Be, be restored. Renewing is like taking the old files away and putting new files in. Be renewed. Be transformed. Now, you transform your life by the word of God. What the word of God says concerning your life. Remember the Bible says that the word of God is spirit and is life. What the word of God says concerning you. Put that fire in your life. And take the old fire of fear away. Take the old fire of defeat away. Take the old fire of, of uncertainty away. Take the old fire of failure away. Put the files that are in the word of God. And they come in form of scriptures. And let these new files permeate your life. Let your life be conditioned by these files. Let your life be run by these files. And you will realize that the Bible says you can only be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do you do it? By the word of God. Remember, the news can never transform you. The negative things on the newspaper cannot transform you. The reports that you'll be getting from different places cannot uh, transform you. The one thing that can transform you is this. The word of God. And it's my prayer that you allow the word of God to do its ministry in you. You know, the word of God has got a ministry. And when this ministry lands in your life, it will change you. Dramatically change you. Take time and do devotions every day. Take time and pray every day. And when you pray, pray the words of God. Pray the will of God for your life. Because the will of God is found in His word. And you will realize by doing that, you will always be salty in an environment that is not salty. You will always be adding life. You will always be preserving life. You will always be producing power, healing power, wherever you go. Things will be changing. Why? Because you have made up your mind that you are not going to be brought down by what you hear, but you will always be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? Amen. And number four, which is the last one. Let your influence, you know, the, 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 the soul has got influence. Right? Let your influence be felt through your words and actions. What is the influence of the soul? As I say, the soul has got healing powers. The soul has got preservative powers. The soul adds taste. Changes the taste of everything. When you put salt somewhere, changes the taste. Now listen to this. Let your influence be felt through your words and through your actions. This is the time to stretch out and help someone. You may not know those people who are sick. You may not be able to be allowed in the hospitals to go and help. But remember, those people who are discouraged, those people who have lost hope, those people who are going through this, this, this weakness and they don't know what to do with it. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Let your influence be felt through your words. Speak words of life to them. Speak words of encouragement to them. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed us to preach the good news. And what the Bible says that for those who are sitting on ashes to bring beauty in them. Right now there are some people who are sitting on ashes. There are some people who are mourning. We are supposed to be giving them the spirit of gladness. For those people who are having heavy hearts, we are supposed to, uh, to remove that heavy heart. Why? Through our words and through our actions. This is the time when there is a lockdown. Remember, your phone is still working. Encourage somebody somewhere. 
This is the time. Even when things are not working properly, remember some of you are can be able to drive, some of you can be able to, to be to, to ride your bikes or anything to another place. Some of you can be able to visit one or two people. And you know what? Encourage them. Touch their lives. Through your words and through your actions. I want you to imagine this thing. That you have got a packet of salt in your house, but it is in the shelf. And you cook a very, very, very nice meal and you don't put any salt in it. And every person who has visited you are saying, listen to this, the, 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 the food is a bit bland. It doesn't have any taste. But you know you've got a packet of salt in the shelf. That packet is not important at all. If, even though it is in your house, it is on the shelf. The salt becomes unimportant only when it is applied. And let me tell you, you become important, you become relevant in life only when you are applied. When you are applied on people's lives, when you are applied in people's affairs, when you are applied and people can taste you, you can preserve life, you can speak life, that is when you are important and you are relevant. So, what I would like to say to you is that, don't be like that packet of salt that is on the shelf, that you are full of saltiness. You've been studying the word of God. You've been guarding your heart. You've been saturated with the word of God. But, you don't want to apply that in the lives of people. Remember, we have been sent to the world to bring life. And my encouragement to you this morning is that God will touch your life. God will bless your life. God will protect you. He will see you through and he will lift you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now I want to pray with all of you, whoever you are, and I want to bless your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Believing that the Bible says, whatever two or three agree on earth, it shall be done by their Father in heaven. So I believe in the prayer of argument. And you know what? The prayer of argument doesn't know space or time. So I want to pray with you, and I want to start with you in prayer. So wherever you are, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are before your presence this morning. We thank you and we give you glory and honor. We know who you are and what you can do. We know that you are the one who changes all things. You are God, I'm committing my listeners before your presence. At this time when there is worry, at this time when there is fear, at this time of uncertainty, when people don't know where to go or what to do, Jehovah God, I pray that your preservative power will guard their lives in Christ Jesus. I pray that this disease will not bring them down, but Jehovah God, it will even bring them closer to you in the name of Jesus. Father, protect their homes, protect their marriages, protect their jobs, protect their health to the glory of your name. Every plan that Satan has over their lives, we bring it down to the glory of God. And we thank you, God, that you are with us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And it is in Jesus' name we pray and we believe. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you so much and have a blessed day.